started. Look at this group. This is so awesome. Yay! So I recognize I recognize fellow Wappers here. Okay, if you're new to the West Bay Christ Foundation, welcome. Um, so what we're going to do this evening is we're going to talk about obviously food and budget. I know everybody wants to save money, and Claire has some great ideas. She's going to give you some background on who she is in just a moment. But for those of you who are seasoned Wappers. Okay? Give her some, you know, give other people here that may be new to Weston A. Price and to the philosophy of Weston A. Price, give them, you know, we all want to support each other here. Okay? So I know even those out there have been doing this for 10, 20 years, you always still can learn something new. And those of you who have never heard of Weston A. Price and still want to eat healthy on a budget, obviously, while you're here, um, just really pay close attention to what Claire has to say this evening. And afterwards, I want you to mingle with others here to kind of get a better idea of what we've all been doing, what I've been doing for, what, three and a half years. And I can guarantee you some people doing it a lot longer than I have on this woman right here. Okay? I've learned a lot from her. Okay? So give Claire a warm welcome. Um, 
Um, I did grow up in a household that ate the standard American diet. Um, we did so ourselves up until my son was born and I decided to have a natural, a fully natural childbirth with him. He's 10 and um, we had all his baby food and that sort of started down the path. And then we've slowly been evolving ever since. Um, I'm also a chiropractic patient and my kids don't see a normal pediatrician and all of that stuff. So, um, and my family is in the back. There's my daughter is seven and my son is 10 and my husband has come with me. So, um, oh, and I have personally suffered my own health and budget crises. Um, I won't go into those gory details, but please note that I've been where a lot of my clients often are. So, U.S. averages, Americans, we really tend to put our foot in our mouth or our wallet in our mouth, however you want to say it. Um, let's see, but our current state of the U.S. economy, our median earnings are $51,404 per year. This is what the median, um, um, this is what the median, the median person uh, earns in the United States these days. Unemployment is currently at 7.4%. It has improved. You might have seen advertisements for mortgage interest rates having gone up. That means the economy is starting to recover somewhat from 2009, or I'm sorry, 2007. Um, our current inflation is 1.8%, so things are only getting more expensive. It might be fractionally, but it's still happening. Our health care costs currently are, for, for a family of four annually, are $22,030. I can tell you right now that my family paid our practice fee for these ladies right here, and that is the extent of our medical health care that has occurred this year. I'm going to show you guys the cost of food in just a second. The IRS suggests that a family of four should be able to live on $777 per month for their food allowance. Most of the clients' budgets that I see are significantly in excess of that number. Most people suggest, I can pick two. I can pick good, I can pick cheap, or I can pick fast. Which one is it, which two is it gonna be? Is it gonna be good and fast, or excuse me, is it going to be good and cheap? Is it going to be cheap and fast? Or is it going to be good? Which, which of those things are, are, are most of your minds in right now when you think, oh gosh, it's, it's 5.30. What am I going to cook for dinner? I don't have anything in my freezer. If you were to qualify for Texas food stamps, the same family of four would be allotted $668 per month in SNAP benefits. So I'm talking today on how we can live on this very budget. The IRS and SNAP both say that a family of four, and I'm using that as my personal example, please feel free to, to look at these numbers for your own. Um, they say that they're about $668 to $777 per month is about where my family should be. We've all heard them. <laughs> it's too expensive. Organic is more. We go to the grocery store and we might look at that broccoli and it's $2.99 and the conventional is 99 cents. And you're going, really? What, if, what do I do? It's inconvenient. It takes too much time. I cook every night. And when I don't cook every night, I've had something prepared from the night before. And it, take, it does take time. Uh, social engagement and how that affects us. This is something that I deal with occasionally. My partner or my husband or my kids will not eat something. I've tried a lot of experiments that have failed. <laughs> Where do I buy my food? What do I buy? And what do I do with this? <laughs> Anybody know what to do with the percentage? <laughs> percentage chickens, awesome. I got lots of them. <laughs> lots of them. Lots of them. <laughs> they came from green leaves. Lots of green. I'll, I'll talk about it. <laughs> 
Okay, so most of the time, our crises are what propels us into action. It could be a health-related crisis, or it could be a financial crisis. I talk to most, most of the people that I talk to are in the middle or are um, about to embark on a significant financial crisis. And they have often, they deal with the same thing with regards to health. So think about what paradigm shift caused you to change your habits. Okay. This is a part of the monthly budget worksheet that my clients fill out for me. Um, you guys can get, up, can get this. It's in a spreadsheet. It's a really happy little spreadsheet. It's very, very easy to, to put together. Um, there's a whole other half of the page that I couldn't fit on the slide because I wanted it big enough for you guys. Um, these, will, these cells will all auto-calculate for you. And this part right here, the food and the groceries and the dining out and the, ch the children's lunch, other, those, this is the total that I start on when I'm working with people in how to start their, their real food journeys. So, First and foremost, let's categorize and think about what are, what are our big ticket items. I know what mine are, and I, I've been preparing and living West Bay Price style for quite some time, so more than several years, and I don't claim that everything that I do is perfect. There are a number of sourdough bread loaves that I have had to cut off the ends because that's the only good part. So, but I, I do know that Things evolve and change, and one month or one quarter, I might not buy the same meat from the same farm that I buy the next quarter because I found out about somebody else. So what do you buy? Let's talk about that. Meat and poultry. Um, the large bulk of most of our budgets is probably meat. Um, when you look at a lot of these live on a food stamp budget blogs, that are out there, and they are, um, people have said, I couldn't afford to do as much meat. Well, okay, that's fine um, to a certain degree. We eat meat every night. The, the type of meat might vary. It might not be um, as, it might not be a, a steak. Um, it might be more of a pound of grass-fed hamburger meat that I've cooked into a dish. But Finding out, first and foremost, um, where, you, where to start. So categorize the things that are most important to you. For me, meat is a huge, a huge importance. Dairy and eggs. This is also something that we could not go a day without. Um, we eat eggs for breakfast. We drink raw milk. Those things are a staple in our diet on a, on a very regular basis, even multiple times a day. Vegetables, also, something that you, that, that doesn't go, I don't go a day without digging into my crisper to make sure that I have something that's available. Water, beverages. Um, um, water is, having the right kind of water and, and having the correct kind of things that you, that, that you drink, are huge, and where we spend our money is often um, centered around those types of consumables. You know, when you when you stop and you're filling up your car and you think, "Gosh, I'm really thirsty," and you go in and you buy a bottle of water that's 99 cents or a dollar fifty or whatever, those kinds of things really, really add up. Obviously, you guys all know this. Um, so, being able to have in your home the ability to have that water available and have it at a, at, a, at a low cost. Beverages, um, what I'm discussing here is, are things that are um, non-mainstream beverages. So not your Diet Coke. Um, I, don't want you, I don't want to hear, hey, where's the best price to buy my Diet Coke? I don't know, I had to price shop it today in order to figure <coughs> with this. Um, I'm referring to things like Water Keeper, which is a, a natural soda. Um, kombucha, which is what my family, we, we use Waterkeeper and um, kombucha on a daily basis. Uh, 
um, condiments and snacks. We'll go into a lot more detail on this because this is probably one of the number one offenders. Um, bread and grains, also something that we use every day. Or unless you're on gaps, which if you're on gaps, then we're on a separate, well, that's a separate topic. Um, and then beans and legumes. Where does it come from? Farmers markets. Um, I'm not, I, I, I love farmers markets. I think they're wonderful. I'm not as aggressive about going and finding my items at farmers markets because truthfully, I'm really, really busy. And Saturday mornings are kind of a day that I want to chill out. So if, if your natural shopping rhythm is to be able to get up and go someplace on Saturday morning and you want to explore a farmer's market. There are so many great things out there. Go with cash and go with a budget. Co-ops. Um, most of my food comes from co-ops currently. Backyard gardens. We'll talk on that in a little bit. Specialty stores. Um, buying in bulk, uh, like your Costco or your Sam's. And health food markets. This is I, I haven't been inside of a Costco or a Sam's or a bulk food distribution center in several years. Um, my, I, I probably don't go to the grocery store um, more than once a week, and I've talked with some people that go every day. And it is what it is. Um, delivery services. Uh, there is a local organic delivery service. Um, the, the, name of, the name of the company is called Green Link. G-R-E-E-N-L-I-N-G. They're an Austin-based company, and they source sustainable farms that are local to our areas, and they cooperate with those farms. And then it is a online grocery store. So you go onto your online uh, Greenlink account, and you select your items that you'd like to have delivered, they have a variety of different items and a variety of different plans that you can pick. My family uses a local box, which means that it's a it's probably 12 items, um, fresh produce that have come from local farms, and each week it's $35. And I can add to that um, what has occurred and what has caused me to really um, make a big difference in my cooking habits is I often get things that I would never buy in the grocery store. I've never once even, I had to Google image search what a persimmon was. I had no idea. <laughs> Until I got six of them, and then I didn't know what to do with them. So, um, it's, Greenly is a great, great tool. Um, the $35 local box is something that I've, I've done since they uh, came to the DFW market. Um, their website is greenlink.com. I have no affiliation with them. The internet. Yay for buying food on the internet, right? Um, all of the bulk purchases that I make come from the internet. And that can be uh, beans, it can be flour, it can be a variety of different um, consumables that come every month, which we'll also talk about with regards to budgeting. Farmers. Buying direct from your farmer, um, whether it's a meat farmer, which we've got a lot of local sources and a lot of really great um, resources for you to draw from. I The last time I bought a large order of meat, I went in with another family and we bought half of a cow. Um, so she took, her family took half of some of the cuts, my family took half of the cuts, and we had um, a quite a freezer full of beef that was readily available in deep frozen and it was it met all of our quality standards and was considered priced considerably less than buying it directly from Whole Foods. Um, I think that what hey Don, hey Don. Uh, the last time we checked I think their grass their hamburger meat, grass fed hamburger meat was what? Four ninety four ninety nine a pound. So four ninety nine a pound is decidedly better than seven ninety nine. And that's when you just buy it without doing like a half cow. Right, right. And yeah. you can, that's without buying in bulk. So that's just buying, if you just want a pound of, of ground hamburger meat, grass fed from this particular farmer, um, 
that's the cost is $4.99. It goes down substantially when you get into the buying the bulk. We've got all the information. <coughs> um, buying through a CSA is, is a great way to do things. Um, there, we also, again, we've got resources for community supported agriculture CSA. Um, I have found that for my purposes, being able to take the, the Greenlink system, that has tended to work a little bit better for me than going directly through a CSA and purchasing a share. But it might work for you. Um, it's certainly something that's available, and we have resources in regards to contacting CSAs and purchasing shares. You can purchase um, an actual financial share where you would receive a basket, you can also engage in work shares, which is a great way to save some money. Um, if you have the time and you're on more of a budget and you'd like to devote some of your time to gardening or farming or micro farming, there are a variety of CSAs around DFW. We've got a lot of land, a lot of undeveloped land that's farm land. So there are opportunities for you to go out and spend Saturday helping on the farm. Therefore, you would get your produce and your share for a lesser amount. And then you got the regular grocery store. Okay, SNAP benefits. If anyone is receiving SNAP benefits, then they do not um, transfer to online purchases. You do have to buy from a brick and mortar institution. What's SNAP? Uh, SNAP is um, the food stamp, food, Texas food stamps, um, supplemental uh, nutrition allotment program. Yes. You have to use for, you have to use a brick and mortar institution. So that means it has to be a store, um, a store front. I know it is really unfortunate. Um, we I've worked with um, some people who have who have been SNAP recipients in the past, and along with Section Eight, um, Section Eight housing, and so in that particular setup. Um, what we have done is specifically gone towards the, um, the the more specialty stores that are that are less priced, like the Sprouts, if they accept when there are items that are accepted at Sprouts, um, Whole Foods as well. If you see the the WIC W I C um, label, then, then it's, it is something that's available. And I've tried to encourage people as well that are receiving those types of benefits that. You don't need to buy junk food just because it has a WIC label on it. You don't need to buy the ultra pasteurized milk, the skim milk. Yeah, don't buy that anymore. Um, <laughs> they'll tell you what. Um, just because underneath the, the refrigerator section it says WIC approved. So if you can go to a Sprouts, or you can, and I've even contacted Greenling, I'm actually waiting to hear back from them as to whether or not, because they have a local brick and mortar distribution center, if their, um, if purchases through the SNAP card are available through them, because they, although they don't currently have a distributor for raw milk, they do have um, low tip pasteurized milk, which is decidedly better than what's available at some of the larger grocery store brands. Yes? Um, the farmer's market accepts them. Oh, excellent. So the farmer's market, um, farmers market locations often do accept SNAP as well. Thank you. That was something I was I was waiting for back on. So staying on track, meeting as a family, and any any kind of major budgeting decision, I would encourage you to start. You know, this is sort of budgeting 101. If you are married, talk with your husband or your wife about what your budget looks like. What are your items that you want to spend money on? What is it that's most important? And then be accountable to one another. I can tell you with, with all of what I know, if I put together a budget and then my loving husband goes to the grocery store on a Wednesday afternoon, he might buy something that I've already bought, um, I'm planning to make. I, you know, a variety of different things. Does it meet our quality standards? Okay, you know, trying to get away now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he knows. So, staying on track and staying accountable for one another, I think that that's probably one of the, the largest places where people go, go 
a strain. And so if it means going to the grocery store together and saying, these are the things that I like, or going to the farmer's market together, shopping on Greenleaf, um, all of those things are certainly available. And if you do not have a financial management software that you are using, I would implore you to at least get an Excel spreadsheet that you can use. There are even um, online banking registry systems that are similar to um, your Quicken that's out there. Um, that are free. There is a site called Mint. It's owned by the Intuit software, mint.com. And it is a free financial management tool. And you can use that. So if you're not currently using some form of a budget or some form of personal financial management software, definitely do that. Definitely get on track and, and meet with your family. Meal planning. Okay. Um, this is one of the biggest money saving opportunities that you can find in your in your budget altogether. This has saved us hundreds and hundreds of dollars a week um, just based on knowing what we're going to eat. And so one of the ways that I do that is with my iPhone. That's my, those are my calendars. I have an iPhone, I have my work calendar, I have my kids' obligations, I have my family crossover obligations that I share, and then I have my meal plan calendar. And that way, I can sync all four of those calendars to my album, and I know, without the shadow of a doubt, if my son has football practice on Tuesday at 645, then I need to have something in the crock pot on Monday and Tuesday morning. Those things need to happen. So if I don't have something that's thawed, or if I don't have something that's available or prepared or diced or any of those number of things, we're either going to be eating at 9 o'clock or 930 or I'm going to have crabby kids and I'm going to have to go over to Aldi and get them apples and stuff. Um, which happens. If you need more resources on meal planning, please talk to them, talk to the doctors, because they, they certainly are more, um, they, have some, they have some templates and they have some things that, that can work with you. There's a lot of online resources too. And a roast doesn't need to be thawed. No, it doesn't. I mean, it that's what we're having tonight for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Parts are wrong when I threw it in. Yeah, okay, you throw that stuff in frozen. It doesn't matter if you if you just if, if you looked in the freezer and thought, uh, that looks like a roast. Okay, you know, unwrap it, stick it in the crock pot, turn it on low. We're good. It's actually better that way, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm away from home for 12 hours out of the day, so usually it's eight to ten hours you want to cook those on low. Well, you get a little extra time, you know, because most of us aren't gone from the office gone from home for eight hours. It's usually between 10 and 12, right? So our roast would be burnt by the time we got home. <coughs> put it in frozen with all your veggies, put a little extra liquid in there 12 hours on low. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, okay, make a list. When you go, when, when, when you're sitting at home and you've just done your meal plan, go and shop in your pantry. Go take a look, not just an inventory, but go shop in your pantry. Go look in there and look at the bottom where you've got the Tupperware containers of bulk beans and pull them out and start soaking them now. You know, I mean, that's that's probably one of the larger things that I would recommend to you guys because I thought, I thought, oh, I made tortilla soup and I really need beans. Oh my gosh, and here I am. I happen to be at the Sprouts because here I am. Um, nobody's going to know if I buy that $1.89 can. Well, yeah, I do, and my budget knows. And so when you start to plan your, your meals, go shop in your pantry. Look down there and see the quinoa that you need to go ahead and start soaking, or the beans, or whatever. So, it, and, and if you've planned properly, then the meal that you make on Monday is also feeding you on Thursday because of the way that you planned it and the way that it has been um, set up. So keeping track of your spending, 
Um, this goes back to the financial management software that I was referring to. There's free options. You, Quicken, the basic Quicken, I think is currently $34.99. Um, that's perfectly easy to use. Don't get, unless you own a business, don't get QuickBooks. It hates most people. Um, but Quicken, the regular old Quicken, you can download that thing, your, your bank account right into that, and then you can categorize it. And then a year from now, we can be having a conversation about the categories that, you're, that you've already spent money on. This is one of my favorite things on the face of the planet. Average, Amazon subscribing day. Um, most of my, the reason I don't go to the grocery store very often is because most of my things get delivered to me, which I think is fantastic. Um, not only is it cheaper, but I don't have to drive there. I don't have to stand in the grocery store. I don't have to have whiny kids talk to me about their, how they're hungry and how I need to buy something that I didn't budget for because I have whiny, crabby kids that are at the grocery store with me. And so this is a fantastic tool. Um, I, my family does eat wheat. We do soak all of our wheat. And so when I talk about wheat, please know that I'm talking about having soaked it previously. If you don't know what that is, please come and see us afterwards and we will talk to you about it. Um, but I do purchase my flour that I use for all of my bread making on Amazon Subscribe and Save. And what that is, and See if we can get that to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so you go and you find your organic bread flour that is up to your quality standards and you're happy with on Amazon.com. And so you add it to your cart. Then it will give you, or I'm sorry, it'll have a little blurb over on the side, over on the right hand side of the screen. So Amazon pricing is usually comparable. Um, my example here, I'm going to use the maple syrup that we talked about the other day. So I found some great bean maple syrup that I wanted to have for, for our family. And, I knew, and we were running out of syrup, and it was about time. So um, I went online and I looked on Amazon. I found the same syrup that I buy at Whole Foods for about $23 on Amazon for about $23. If I just bought one of them, it was about $23. Okay, that's about what I pay at Whole Foods which is still, I mean, you know, when you have to buy it, that's, that's a good deal. Um, it's much better than buying the $4 or whatever Hungry Jack. Don't buy that anymore. It's not syrup. Um, <laughs> so in the, the, the subscribe and save feature, if you set this up to be a recurring shipment that comes to you every month, then they're going to knock off 15% off of your price. So it's going to come down. And then, if you have five items that you've also signed up to receive in a given month that are subscribe and save items, they're going to knock an additional 5% off of that. So you've got, you've got your syrup now for 20% off, essentially, and you're going to get it whenever you want it. So my delivery day is the 10th of every month, and I know for sure that every three months I'm going to get cat food because that's one of the things I have ordered. Um, bulk, you know, cat food. And then I have syrup that's now coming to me once a quarter. I have my bread and uh, my bread flour coming to me once every, my bread comes to me, in, or the flour comes to me every four months. But I can set that up if I, this summer has been a ridiculously busy summer and my sourdough starter has been neglected and abused. And so I haven't been using it as much I know that when it comes time for that bread ship, that bread flour shipment to come out, I'm going to delay it, and it's a click, and it's done, and it's easy. It says, skip this shipment, and then you're done. So the things that cost, maybe the, the larger item costs that you're going to buy, go check on Amazon. Check and see if, they, if they're available for this subscribe and save, because it's a killer deal. Skipping the supermarket altogether. Yes. Can I ask a question about the Amazon? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to tell you about that. Um, okay. I'm uh, Amazon Prime members. Their shipping is free on subscribe and save. So if you are an Amazon Prime member in Prime service, um, you pay a seventy-five dollar fee once per year. And then every item that you order on Amazon that says Prime next to it, 
you have free shipping, two-day shipping, too. So it's free two-day shipping on any Amazon Prime item. And we use it from, there, Amazon has a whole bunch of different um, content that's available in their Prime services. Um, everything from media services, you can go in there and watch live streaming um, events or recorded TV and that sort of thing. Um, We've lived without cable for more than four years and don't miss it, um, cable television. So that was $100 a month that we no longer spend. Um, another great budgeting alternative, not necessarily food related, but since we're here. Um, going without cable is something that you can and could very well do without a lot of pain and suffering. Um, Amazon Prime offers streaming content for your media so you don't miss your shows. And for $75 a year. For $75 a year. Yes. Okay. Amazon Mom Amazon yes. Yes. It's the same thing. Yeah. So if you um, you can also go to there's an Amazon Mom or family, I believe, and then there's also an Amazon student account that's a, a, a discount. Um, and I'm not really sure what cr credentials you would have to prove, um, but definitely take advantage, take a look at it, because most of my groceries come to me in the mail or on my front door. So skipping the super supermarket and shopping with intention, you can kind of see my yoga teacher showing right here. Um, this, this farm, this egg co-op has changed names, they're now called um, uh, Farm Kids Fresh Eggs, they just recently went through a change before I snagged that picture, picture of them. And that's actually a shout out to one of our members here, Emily Brooks, who's not here tonight. Um, she and her family, they sell these eggs at the um, Holland County Farming Market. Um, no, I know. No, Holland County. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I, go, I know that I get my eggs directly from her. Um, I either bring her a 20 and I get four dozen eggs. Um, every week or every couple of weeks, depending on our need. Um, or I will go onto my wellsfargo.com and send her a direct payment through that, which is also free for both she and I. Um, and I go by and pick up my eggs at her house. So there's not a whole lot of uh, expectation for us to need to go to the grocery store for those types of staples that you run out of and that you need, do need to get regularly. Buying in bulk, again, keep a bulk log. It, it has happened to me, it will happen to you. You think, I need this, 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 and this, and then all of a sudden it's in the back of your freezer. And then also these defrost your freezer every now and then, my name's, my name's really needs it. Um, and on your pantry doors too, I mean, I, I store a lot of my bulk items in airtight containers. And unless I've really meticulously labeled them, I've stuck another bag on top of it, and then I might not know exactly what's in there. Before you go and buy in bulk, make sure that it's something that you, your family can use. Make sure that it's something that you don't already have. And make sure that it's something that you're going to realistically store. Because if you buy a five gallon um, bucket of dried beans, your husband might hate you. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I don't know where I would store that. Personally, I don't have room. I don't, and, I, and I really don't want to put it in my garage. It's, we don't have basements here. I would Under the bed. What? Under the, under the bed. Under the bed. <laughs> See? I'm going to put beans under the bed now. Um, so they're store and buy in bulk. But my point here in regards to your finances, is not necessarily should you buy in bulk, yes it is cheaper, but buy what you will what you will use. If your family doesn't typically eat brown rice or quinoa or beans or whatever it might be, don't buy five pounds of it. I mean, don't just, you know, buy something, try it out, decide that you actually like it. Even if you had to pay a couple of dollars more or cents more, then just, you know, use your better judgment. Okay. Equipment. I'm going to touch briefly on these things because these are big ticket items 
and it's important for um, a lot of us to to embark on such a such a purchase. But if you don't have that in your means, then you can use what you've got. That's my freezer, um, and that's my deep freezer. I have a side by side refrigerator that's like that big for the freezer. I mean, it's tiny. So I had to buy a deep freezer. That is after we bought a, the cow, and those are jars of things that I fermented and canned and that sort of thing. Um, tomatoes that I bought in bulk from the farmer's market one time when they had a, a lot of tomatoes and I was able to score on tomatoes. So um, the dehydrator, that's the Excalibur dehydrator. Um, this is about a $250 item when you buy it with nine trays. It's, it's one of my favorite things in the whole world because it does allow you to take food that would normally go in the trash or in the compost pile um, into, and converting it into something that you will actually use. So the fruit is a huge thing. Um, I found that I like dried bananas better than I like fresh bananas. And I can eat an awful lot of bananas in a short period of time if I don't watch myself because they've been dry and they're really, really good. And they're also not filled with preservatives and sweeteners. Because when you go to the grocery store and you buy even the organic little itty bitty package that's like an eight ounce package of the dry bananas, it's about three dollars and twenty nine cents. I priced it today, and and I can and that little bitty package is probably the equivalent total of three dry bananas, and you're paying three dollars and twenty nine cents for it. So the cost of the dehydrator. Yes, it's a, a larger item, but ask for it for Christmas or go in with a friend. I'm not dehydrating something regularly. So, you know, if I'm, the last time I dehydrated something, I actually used my friends before I bought my own. Mine actually died on me, not the Excalibur. It was a cheaper model, um, which, is, which brings me to another point. I bought a cheaper model. It died. It, I think I bought it on Craigslist for $25. I really shouldn't have spent that money. I should have just gone directly to buy the, the one that I knew would, would be a better yield. Um, the crock pot is, I think that's everybody's best friend, right? I mean, you know, don't use Campbell's soups. Oops, sorry. Don't use canned soups that are um, <laughs> filled with MSG. Those ones that have the red label. There we go. <laughs> And all of them are getting you 